Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. <laughs> oh, she passed away. You playful little scamps. Oh, hi, we're on. Um, greetings, Gherkins, and welcome to another episode of Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Hey, you know that Journey song, When the Lights Go Down in the City? Well, did you know that that was actually based on a series of grisly murders which took place in Texarkana in the late 1940s? Yes, it's the same series of murders that inspired the movie, The Town That Dreaded Sundown. And that's why this week we're talking about our favorite and least favorite songs about crime. I will begin and I will begin by breaking my rule. My rule is I try never to mention songs from the last century, always try to stick with this century, but I'm going to go all the way back to 1983 to talk about Legal Tender off of the B-52s album, Whammy, um, which is perfect name for a B-52s album. Um, <laughs> a few weeks ago, I had to reorganize my basement, so I was down there cleaning and straightening, and I, was, I just found myself singing over and over again. So I fixed up the basement, do, do, do. And I started, I, I started to clean up and think about that song. I thought, what a cheerful song about counterfeiting. I can, I can only think of two other cheerful songs about crime, and if none of you guys name them, I'll let you know what they are right before recommendations. But I just thought, this is just such an upbeat tune about breaking the law. It just makes me so happy. And also, it's a real DIY approach to inflation. You know, it's like, you just imagine Fred Snyder going, well, why don't we print our own money? And the rest <laughs> of the B-52s go, that's a good idea. And it's, it's totally in character for them because the B-52s formed because they couldn't find bands that would play danceable music at their friend's party. So they were like, well, why don't we just form our own band? And they were like, yeah. And they went and they did it. And the rest is history. Fantastic, wonderful, bizarre uh, history. I always wish that they would release a song about making a meth lab because that would just be great. Just want to hear Fred Snyder go, hurry up and bring your tweaker money. Woo! <laughs> um, Fred Snyder singing war pigs is still something I want very badly. Generals gathered in their masses, but I, I digress. Um, the, uh, the thing about it is that uh, um, we were talking in, in our last practice about the, the plethora of precious bands, you know, sort of like twee, precious, like, and, and I realized like how close the B-52s could have come to being precious. I think if, if, if there had been record company involvement early on, you would not get the B-52s that we have. But there's this weird dark streak that runs through the B-52s. There's this real, real darkness that's kind of in there. It's like, you know that they've probably seen this town that dreaded sundown. They're sitting around, <laughs> four or five people who have seen that movie just laughed. Um, it, we, we know they've seen nudes on the moon. So as proof of the weird dark streak that runs through the B-52s, take a look at the video for Legal Tender. It is really weird. At one point, they go into the solos and they have all the instruments that are used on spinning tables. And then they cut to this, like, I guess it's a Mosrite guitar, and they show how to play the riff by putting dots on the fretboard. And then one of the dots pulls back and you see Cindy but she looks really scary. It looks like something from like a 1960s Italian Jallo film. It is really kind of kind of like something out of a horror movie. It's like as if David Lynch and Dario Argento said, "Let's get together and make a music video." So it is again a great video. Uh, it is a great song. It is my favorite song about crime. Now, before I move on to my least favorite song about crime. Do we have any questions for me about my, or any thoughts about uh, uh, Legal Tender? Just that I, I like the song too. It's a great song, yeah. So nobody's gonna ask why they need jelly jars if they're counterfeiting? Cause stocked it full of jelly jars and heavy equipment. Right. You know why they needed them? Well, why is that? I, I have no damn idea. Um, apparently the song was, the lyrics were written by a guy named Robert Waldrop. Uh, who also wrote the lyrics to Rome, which seems like two really different songs. And I think all he's ever done is write lyrics for the B-52s. He may have done a little bit of music stuff. I can find nothing about this guy. So if you are in the B-52s, or if you know someone in the B-52s, if you're Robert Waldrop, if you know Robert Waldrop, or if you might know why you would need jelly jars. The only thing I think of in the movie Mr. 880 with, I think, Burt Lancaster, he has jelly jars that he fills with ink for his counterfeiting setup. And he counterfeits 
he's just, again, he's, he's counterfeiting on a low scale. And I think at one point he spells Washington wrong and George Washington's name. It's a good, good movie, but, um, the uh, um, I have no idea. So if you have any idea, folks, if you know any of these people, if you are in the B-52s or you are Robert Waldrop or you have the answer or you have a good, a good theory, please put it in the comment section. And now I'm going to ruin everybody's day by telling you about my least favorite song about crime. And that song would be Take the Money and Run by the Steve Miller Band. Uh, <laughs> now, first of all, I just want to say I've got nothing against Steve Miller because he had that that live on air showdown with the publicist for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, you sit down and learn something. That was beautiful. We'll, we'll, we'll have a link up for that. But the uh, um, that was fantastic. So I don't have a lot there. Um, it's just that, um, and first of all, the song itself is, is basically a plot to a Quentin Tarantino film. They go to rob some guy, they have to run down the Mexican. I, I, you know, he, uh, loses my interest like two seconds into it. It sounds like they were trying to jump on the Southern Rock bonanza that was going through the country at the time or plague infection. But the, my, my thing with the song is I had an experience with it. Uh, when I used to work in Delaware, I used to have to take SEPTA down and get on DART. So if you've ever, if you folks have ever ridden DART, you now know why Joe Biden rides a bike because DART is, Delaware area rapid transportation is the scariest damn thing in the world. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting on Delaware and uh, area rapid transportation and a bunch of older people. And I think I'm in my maybe mid thirties at the time. And there's a guy with headphones on and he's every now and then I go, Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so, you know, I, I move as far away as I can. So after a while he looks up and goes, and, and kids, parents cover your children's ears. I'm about to curse. He looks up and goes, Whoa, eat that pussy. And, <laughs> and I'm like sitting there and I'm just like, Okay, and but the weird thing was all these old people in the bus start to like giggle and laugh, and this old woman goes, "I'll drink to that," and I'm like, <laughs> and and it's bothered me ever since. It was so so weird and so like if you saw it in like a Tim and Eric sketch, you go, ah, "That's a little off," and it, it was really bizarre. So yeah, there's a blowfly version of it or something. It's it's just odd that that is like he came up maybe he came up with it or he had it ready and he just wanted to wait till we pulled to a stop on on Dart I don't know and the bus drivers on Dart are death as a post so you know they're 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 like a thousand years old there's you no know, the exhaust coming out the back of the Dart bus is actually exhaust from them so it's uh, um yeah so I'm just going to say right now great song Legal Tender by B 52s not so great song unless you're shouting obscenities on Dart. Take the money and run by uh, Steve Miller, man. Okay, I don't know who's next, but good good luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll go next. Um, for my great song, I'm going to go back to the 19th century and pick an old folk classic based on the life of some uh, African American man named Morris Slater. Uh, who was an outlaw, a railroad bandit, um, and uh, he, he acquired the nickname Railroad Bill uh, when detectives uh, didn't, didn't know or bother to find out his real name. They just called him Railroad Bill, and that's, that kind of stuck, and he became something of a folk hero. He reportedly escaped gunfights with lawmen, detectives, and bounty hunters a total of 17 times. He had hundreds of newspaper stories written by him. And a song came about called Railroad Bill uh, around that time. He was actually finally cornered and killed on March 7th, 1896 in a general store in Alabama. The song is probably most famously done by Doc Watson, but it's also <coughs> covered by lots of people. Including you, right? Including me. I should probably mention that, yes. Including me. I've recorded it myself. Yeah, I just I just like the song. I've I've come to appreciate it. Um, not that I agree with being an outlaw or a bandit or robbing trains. <laughs> but it's a living. <laughs> it's a living, right. Also, also, well, I'm glad I, we cleared that up. One of the the of the songs is he is railroad bill, he never worked and he never will. I just found out, according to Wikipedia today, I was looking looking it up. He actually did work. He was a well respected laborer in a for a turpentine company before he before he quit his job to to 
have a life of robbing trains. But supposedly he started his lawlessness when his first uh, recorded act of lawlessness was stealing a ride on the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, and he was thrown off uh, by a brake van on that train while the train was still running, and he, uh, <laughs> um, for the rest of his life, uh, decided to avenge that act. <laughs> and all his crimes were done on the against the LNA, LNN, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad. So that's something I learned today. As for my least favorite song, it comes from this entry, amazingly enough, from January 2020, um, when it was released by Eminem on his album, Music to be Murdered by, and the song is called Darkness. It was a top 40 hit, so maybe you've heard it. Um, and he sings in this song from the perspective of Stephen Paddock, who is the Las Vegas shooter who shot up the country music festival in Las Vegas. And it's sung, to the, one of the themes in the music behind the rapping is the sound of silence. So Paul Simon gets a co-writing credit with Marshall Mathers. And what I don't like about this song is it's, besides it's creepy, it's supposed to be, I guess, but I think it's, he sings from the first person and pretends that he understands what's going on in Stephen Maddox's brain, which I don't think anybody can. But besides that, I think it's exploitive. And I think it also kind of glorifies in a way the mass murder, even though the intention of Eminem was to bring attention to gun violence to maybe do something to stop it. I don't think it did anything of that sort. The song did anyway. I don't think it did because mass murders haven't decreased since it's released. But maybe he did bring attention to the need for I don't think so though yeah I don't I don't think it's that good of a song even though Eminem's written many great songs this one is not one of them and it's I'm gonna say it's my pick for bad crime song that's a shame because you were halfway through getting that Eminem back piece <laughs> what was you only had like three more visits to to the no, you have to the that. tattoo shop. And, you know, <laughs> that back piece was going to be. Now you're going to have to get the M and M's from, like you know, the candy ad. I'll fi I'll fi figure it out. Yeah. Um. So I chose for the best one um, <clears throat> a song called uh, "Down in the Willow Garden," um, which I have a feeling I mentioned on one of these before. I'm not sure why, but. I first heard of it from the movie Raising Arizona when uh, Holly Hunter is like trying to rock the baby back to sleep and she's singing this uh, melody. As a kid, I was like, wow, that's really nice melody. And then I looked up not long ago, the lyrics and they're really dark. And it's about this guy uh, murdering his girlfriend and that, you know, he's walking home and it's like dad is crying on the porch because he's gonna see his son hanging. So it sounds like they don't tell you why he murdered her, but it's one of those like, hmm, maybe she was pregnant or something. <clears throat> like that other one, the Ballad of Billy Joe, isn't that like a... Um, but yeah, what I like about it is um, the version I was listening to uh, that we'll put a link to. Um, it's an older one from the 50s and it's, it's very pleasant sounding, like the melody's nice and the um, the women's voices together are nice and the lyrics are just really dark. So um, I had some runners up to like uh, Bank Robber by The Clash, a good one. Um, uh, so for worst, yeah, I, uh, I also chose uh, Take the Money and Run for <clears throat> many reasons. Um, I do have something against Steve Miller Band. His band sucks. <laughs> Um, that is cool what he said, about, you know, with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I've just never, every time I hear one of his songs, um, I hate it. And then it's like stuck in my head, that one especially. Um, and when I was a kid, I always thought he was saying, don't take the money and run. And I'm like, don't take the money and run. But he's saying, take the money on. and skip. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, while we're talking about the lyrics, like Billy Joe and Bobby Sue, it's like, <laughs> 
Come on. <laughs> and he rhymes El Paso with uh, Big Hatzel. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Texas. And what is it? it? Exactly where the exactly what the facts is or something yeah I, I can do better i can say um really got into a great big hassle bobby sue ran so fast she dropped her tassels because she's also <laughs> working as an exotic dancer and he's an asshole yeah so yeah 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 we can yeah or yeah we can we can <laughs> we can come up with better rhymes than mr steve miller um if that is your I, also, I wanted to mention uh, honorable mention for best i had a bunch of those actually but mac the knife i think is a really cool song too because it's another one where it's like hey and he's talking about murdering um, <laughs> i like this question this had me thinking a lot about songs and bang bang by nancy sinatra that's nice. <laughs> but i think that's more like <laughs> they were pretending so that's it for me okay uh my selections my selection for good song is the song called been caught stealing by jane's addiction which has an amazingly great video. Um, it's a lovely, happy song about shoplifting that actually includes dog barks. Um, according to the Wikipedia page about it, uh, Perry, the singer for Jane's Addiction, said that he had been, I guess, taking care of a, a stray dog or something that was very uh, needy. And so he brought it to the studio while they were recording and the dog started barking. And that's how it ended up on the track. Um, but um, that's actually probably, <laughs> it's probably the only Jane's Addiction song that I like. I, I really was not a huge fan of that band, but um, I really <laughs> like that song and I like the video. I think it's great too. The baseline. Um, what's that? I said the baseline is cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think this, this song is really cool. Um, uh, this, the song that I have as an example of a bad song is a song that was very, very popular um, that I really, I just, I don't think I ever liked. And that is the song, I Don't Like Mondays by the Boomtown Rats, which is very topical in this day and age. It's about the uh, killing uh, in California of the, I think it's the Cleveland Elementary School um, by a woman named Brenda Ann Spencer. Actually, she was a young woman. 16 and um yeah it's a school shooting she killed two people injured a bunch of other people almost a dozen more i think or 10 or 12 i can't remember um it's just uh i don't know it's a weird song it's mostly piano uh there's some timpani and clapping in it and it was a big hit for them which i guess was kind of almost unlike almost any of their other songs it's kind of a weird song for them um, and I, I, you know, I just, I don't think I ever, ever liked the song. Um, Do you know the story behind it? What, 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 how, how it happened? Yeah, I mean, I read up on it. How it happened was they were, uh, Boomtown Rats or, or Bob Geloff was doing an interview at a radio station and there was a telex machine um, right there in the studio with them. And this telex came over the wire. This is before the internet. And it was uh, announcing that this event took place. And, you know, I guess somebody at the radio station pulled off the telex and they were reading it or whatever. And he, he came up with the idea for the song. And, um, and he wrote it, I guess, with the piano player in the band. I know there was a little bit of a dispute later on about who wrote the song. And I guess they shared, eventually shared the royalties for that song. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, that's that's how it came about. I thought that they had when they were at the station. I thought that that she'd called in because I thought they had called. Uh, oh, I, I'd always heard that she'd called in and had said somebody said, "Why did you do it?" And she, I I don't like Mondays. Well, I think the story is is that she did call a radio station okay. out there, but they they heard about it through the telex transmission. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Anyway, that's just, I don't really care for that song too much. It was a huge international hit, so. That's it. I agree. I don't like that song either. Well, fortunately, <laughs> after it was released, school shootings just stopped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't been one <laughs> since. So, um, Dean, by the way, Been Caught Stealing, that was one of my other two happy songs about crime. Love that song. My other happy song about crime that I could think of was Curse of Millhaven uh, by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I live in a town called, off of uh, a murder ballads. 
So, which is a happy song about a little girl that goes on a killing spree. Um, and has the line in it, Stinky Bohoon and his friend with a pumpkin-sized head. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, before we move on to recommendations, just a reminder, speaking of, about crime, it's illegal to own a copy of Procession Magazine within the borough of Brooklyn. So just thought you folks would like to know that. Um, so um, my recommendations for this week, my first one is that you use the name of actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt as an exclamation of surprise, either happy surprise or disappointing surprise. For example, $40 for a pizza? Joseph Gordon-Levitt, <laughs> or like, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, would you look at that? So it's just uh, um, nothing against him. Good actor. I'm just saying Joseph Gordon-Levitt, just, it, you can just use it in anything and turn it if it doesn't work. And then um, people will be like, JGL. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, but don't shorten it, people. No, don't try to make it cool. Like they did with Wheel of Fortune when they started calling it Wheel. No, you know, <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I landed on bankrupt. Um, the other thing, that'd be great if he was also the uh, um, the puzzle thing, you know, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Don't swear on this show, lady. Um, still a good actor, though. Put him in one of those Marvel movies. He, he'd do anything. Um, the other recommendation I have is Gherkin Alert. Uh, Gherkins, write this down on your calendar. Friday night, July 8th. Uh, at 9 p.m. will be the 10th anniversary of my radio show, Rod the Anonymous Tells You How to Live. Uh, it's been going straight for 10 years. I only ever missed one episode where we had to run a repeat, and that's because I had pneumonia, and I think I can be let go on that. So it will be our three-hour extravaganza. So not an extravaganza, extravaganza. <laughs> we'll be really thinking a lot about now we dance. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, if you can, please uh, listen to that and we'll throw in a link for the last one. But I'm really excited about doing the three hour 10th anniversary because I never thought I'd get to 10 years of this thing. I thought we were going to get shut down. Like on the very first episode we began um, with the song, I'm pretty much fucked. And I didn't think I was going to get through playing that. So, all right. So thank you. Who I don't know who's next. Joe sure. again. I recommend removing your shoes as you enter your house and leaving them by the door. And you can, yeah, and then that way you can wear slippers in the house or socks or whatever. Um, that way you don't track in contaminants from the outside world like herbicides and pesticides and dirt. Yeah. So that's- Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. what is on your feet, young man? <laughs> I also recommend my version of Railroad Bill, which you can get on Bandcamp right now. <laughs> <laughs> link in the comment, link in the uh, description. That's it for me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I recommended fostering a, or adopting a, or rescuing a cat or an animal. Um, this week, I'd like to recommend uh, taking it to the vet as soon as possible and making sure it does or does not have a chip. <clears throat> the cat that we took in, we had it for just under two weeks, I guess, but we finally got a vet appointment because they were full and then uh, it had a chip and it had an owner and the owner actually, I contacted them and talked to them uh, and we met up with them and I was nervous because I thought that, you know, I don't know this person just left a cat outside without a collar. This person, other woman said she talked to somebody. He said, I never talked to anybody. It's crazy. But anyway, <clears throat> gave, gave the cat back to the guy, obviously. So I would recommend if you accidentally kidnap a cat, you should give it back. <laughs> and also, also people, uh, visit cats? Dan Joe Mar show July 2nd uh, at in Philomoka. That's Joe and me and uh, Marshall. Matters. Ching. <laughs> and I would also, I would also, cats are not outdoor pets. Don't let your cat go outdoors. Cats belong indoors, people. They're they're domesticated and they they, and they don't kill have birds and all sorts of stuff. And they make messes and stuff in yards and yeah, yeah, in the city. really, don't yeah. Your cats all. belong inside, <laughs> like this lazy cat you can't see back there. Yeah, and uh, Dan and I recommend to anybody um, go to a shelter. There are plenty of older cats that need homes and. Um, Find one and give it a good home. So we're getting one Saturday. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Susie. Susie. 
So she's the that- kitten. We weren't going to get a kitten. The kids were saying they wanted an older cat because um, they don't um, get. I almost said rented. They almost they don't get adopted as much. Uh, so that I would recommend that as well. Adopt an older cat. <clears throat> um, my recommendation this week is for a television program which you can stream on HBO Max now. Um, it's actually quite old, um, and I've watched it all before, but I started rewatching it. It is the television program called Flight of the Concords. Um, I stumbled across the availability of this show um, the other night and immediately started watching it again. Um, it's, uh, it's the story of two New Zealand musicians who moved to New York City and are trying to make it big in the music business um, right. with, our, with, with, with their manager, Mary. Who we, <laughs> <laughs> Best <laughs> character on any show ever. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, too many dicks on the dance floor. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I recommend you check it. If you've never seen it, you have to see it. It's got so, uh, lots of other uh, uh, comedians on it. Uh, 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 Eugene Merman's in it, Joe. Your friend, your pals with him. Um, and uh, Kristen Schaal is amazing as the no, right? Was that obsessive amazing? fan. She's just absolutely hilarious. Anyway, I totally recommend Flight of the Concords on HBO Max. I love Murray's safety advice, where it's like, I keep telling people, I keep telling these people, stay out of the crowded, well lit streets. Use small, dark alleys where they keep getting mugged. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he's like, I got great news for you guys. And they're like, you got us a gig. And he's like, no, I got you a star. <laughs> in this week's addendum it'll be the belco experiment and the new album from silver walks just just the b-52s are sort of yeah there, there needs to be a b-52s movie Forget whatever whatever biopic you people think you're making now and make that B-52s movie. Stop it. Drop whatever you're doing. Drop, I don't want to see Avatar 12 or whatever. I never saw the first Avatar. Unless, you know, there's like an Avatar of like the B-52s. But yeah, I'm just saying B-52s biopic. Do it. And don't say biopic. It's biopic. The biopic man. <laughs> the biopic. Oh, so, that was such a good show. Oh, geez. You know, he was from Ojai, California. Not the bionic woman. Yeah, she wasn't from Ojai, California. Maybe she was. I don't know. If you know where the bionic woman was from, just, and, and I don't want to, no, nothing that you, nothing that you've seen on Pornhub. I just, I'm just saying <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, that Jamie woman who's, uh, whose agent hasn't returned her calls in a while. If you know, if you know where she was, because we know Steve Austin was from Ojai, California. And and the people of Ohio are proud. It says on the sign as you drive in, Ohio, California, home of astronaut Steve Austin. That's a fact. Are we out of here? Bye. All right. Bye, folks. <laughs>